Right, that, I broke my wrist um, skating PlayStation and I went to hospital and um, my wrist was knackered. I was in, uh, and I was waiting for an operation for four days, like to put pins in it. And I was waiting and they wake me up at eight in the morning and then they were like, yep, we might do the surgery today. And then nine o'clock at night, you're not allowed to eat anything all day. Nine o'clock at night, they're like, ah, oh, all the surgeons have gone home. So, um, you know, you can eat something now. And I'm like, oh. like, you're not allowed to eat all day long. So I'm like basically starving hungry, my arms in the air. And then I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna start a skateboard company. I'm gonna call it heroin. Like, people are gonna remember that. And I drew the logo with my left hand. And that's the logo. I've always drawn. Like, people are like, when did you start drawing? And I'm like, when I was four years old. What do you mean? It, and it's, that is as relevant as it is like today. That's what I've, you know, always, always, always done. Um, and then I, I printed t-shirts when I was at my first college. Um, this little crew that we had up in, uh, up in Burnley. Um, and I'd print those t-shirts and go to Manchester and sell them. Um, and then when I moved to um, London, I met Hero and we started a little like, t-shirt company called Superhero. Um, and I've always done something. There's always been something to do with artwork and I don't know, I guess a little bit of ent entrepreneurship. Um, you know, hustling. You know, so I, uh, I've always, yeah, I've always done artwork and in various forms, you know. When I was a, ki when I was a kid, it was, uh, this is Spider-Man and he's fighting Darth Vader, you know, and I'd be like, I go through my sketchbooks, I'll go through my books and I'm like, whoa, this is rad. And then uh, all the way up, you know, I've always drawn like monsters and, and all this other stuff. And actually, um, I actually started drawing some, um, some buildings in the town that I grew up in. Um, and I used to phot like color photocopy them or make prints of them and I'd sell those. So I've always done like, I've always done like artwork and sold and like hustled here and there. I'd done this, I'd always done artwork and always done like had these like little hustles, be it t-shirts or selling prints or, you know, doing logos for people and, you know, but it was never, it was never my job. It was never like a full time thing. Um, and it was, I was at Slam City and I was the sales guy. So I'd like, I'd like sell shoes for like DVS or something or do like call up Tomietto and order all the boards and sell them to all the shops. That was my job for a long time. And then at some point it kind of crossed over. It became like, but heroin really helped that. Heroin Skateboards, my company, um, elevated me as an artist. Like people, you know, I'd always done art and I'd always been, creative but starting my skateboard brand gave it sort of a voice and a platform and that's like my portfolio you look back and it's like you see my artwork and it's kind of it's kind of sketchy at the beginning and then it, it goes you know you see the process go through and it's 20 years we've been doing it now so it's uh it's in an interesting place right now um and then we have all this history to to pull from but sorry the question was um you can cut all that. Um, the question was, um, how, when did it transition? It was round about the time I was leaving Slam. I decided that it was time for me to leave Slam and do things on my own. I'd known, I knew enough about the skateboard industry and how it worked that I wanted to, um, I wanted to try it on my own. And we had distributors in Japan, so if I left, it wouldn't be too much of a big deal, like because we, we were doing really well in Japan at the time. So it wasn't like just jumping into the unknown because I had checks coming in. We knew every season we'd, we'd make money. Um, so we did, I did that. And then as, as Heroin Skateboards grew, my art became better known through things like the America shoe we did and everything. Um, people started taking more of an interest, uh, people in America. Um, and then they asked me to be the creative director of Altamont, which was huge. And it was like, it was really rad starting, starting a, a brand with people um, and then getting paid just to do artwork. And that was really the first time that had ever happened. Because before it was always like, oh, well, it can never be my job. And then one day I woke up and it was my job. I 
pretty much do it it's interesting isn't it because i i always think of someone like david lynch because he's like a filmmaker but he was a painter and he makes music and all this other stuff and he has a lot of things going on and i always think of it like that like if i wake up one day what am i going to do today i could go out in the back backyard and paint, paint a canvas or like i could draw a logo for someone or I could, you know, there's like a million things I could do. And skateboarding's like that as well. Yeah, I could go and skate or I could film. But it's like um, you've got all these sort of options open to you as a creative. And it's like, what do I want to do? And it's it's sometimes hard. Like the, the, the sort of lines blur between the two. Um, but I tend to just do a lot of stuff for myself because I mean, I enjoy doing it. And I feel lucky that people respond to that. Like the cabins, I did a bunch of cabin drawings. And I did them because I bought a cabin up in, uh, up in the mountains. And I would, me and my wife would go for walks. And I'd be like, whoa, that cabin's cool. Oh, I'm going to draw it. And it was as simple as that. And that's how it started. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll just draw, maybe I'll draw a few more of these. And it was never the intention for it to be a series of boards or a t-shirt or prints or anything like that. It was just doing it because I wanted to do it. And as it goes, it turned into a series of boards. It turned into a t-shirt. It turned into like prints and, and other people commissioning me to draw cabins for them. So um, it's just funny. It's just like you put yourself out there. And uh, I think people like, I, yeah, I do, I do commission work. And, and I do all that sort of little bit commercial work. But it's still from the same place. It's still like fun for me. And how? Oh, how can I make fun of my friends? Oh, I'll I'll write that in the in the like small text so that no one sees it. But I know it's there. You gotta keep you gotta keep hustling. You gotta keep busy. If you're a freelance artist, it's it's hard out there, you know. Um, so there's all these like little things that you can do. The zine was great. I just wanted to do a zine, and I did it on. I knocked it out on a Sunday afternoon. And, 500 of those things got made in the end. I went to the, I went to the, uh, I went to the uh, print shop and I made 100. And I was just like, yeah, all right, whatever. I'll make 100 here. Yeah, I can sell 100. And then I ended up doing two more print runs of 100. And then um, I decided to give them away with the board. So we made a board, like a collab with the zine. So I ended up uh, making 200 for that. So there's 500 zines out there, which is pretty insane, really. Um, but yeah, I don't know, it was just one thing I decided to do on a Sunday afternoon. It was as simple as that. I was like, ah, yeah, all right, why not? Just knocked it out. With heroin, it's, that's really personal to me. And I'm like, I know all the team riders because I put them on the team. And it's like, that's really my vision of skateboarding. Um, but with, um, with like working for Element or working for Real or working for like Toy Machine or someone like that. Toy Machine were the first people who ever used my graphics. Um, but you just pitch ideas to them. It's like the skateboard companies, then they need artwork. So what I do is I pitch what I think is going to be a good idea for them. They either say yes or no, you know? Um, that's it. Heroin, it's like anything I draw looks like it could be heroin graphic. But with something like, well, I don't know. And then like the real thing, I just like, I had this sort of vision for what I wanted to do, and they we talked to I talked to the art director over there, and we we worked up those um, Chima boards. They were fun to work on. Element, I just um, like I just pitch ideas to them, and they uh, and they seem to be really receptive, and they seem to go really good, and they they all sell out. So just keep keep doing stuff over there. I like all the team riders. I like like Westgate and I like Evan Smith, and Grayson Fletcher. I really like those guys. So it's like pretty rad to be able to do graphics for like people that I really enjoy their skateboarding in front of. It's just like messing around and having fun. Like you go watch a horror movie and you'll draw like that one of the characters or draw your versions of them. And I don't know, just um, like listening to music, listening to like Tom Waits or something or like, I don't know, whatever, Gua, and like just drawing in your sketchbook. And your sketchbook's really like just sort of free form like ideas coming out of you so you you can just be like like oh i'm thinking about like my my accounts and if i've got enough money to buy something or whatever so you're like 
figure it out and like write it down like and so there'll be that and it'll look like a sort of invoicing thing and then all of a sudden you'll write you'll have an idea for a story and you'll write like a weird little story or something and then and then you'll want to draw a mummy for some reason so you'll draw like a mummy or something and that's what my sketchbooks are like they are all over the place and half the time it's like a back page people's phone numbers and all that so it's just like an extension of your brain I think sketchbooks are really important and uh, someone when I was growing up told me that and I was like uh, yeah I think I can relate to that I always carry a sketchbook I kind of get nervous if I don't you know so I've got a couple with me on this trip not with me right now though so unfortunately <laughs> there's two ways of possibly describing that the artists I work with one would be idiots and one would be like beautiful creative unique individuals and I think the truth lies somewhere between the two. Like, so you've got like Simon True, who's like one of my best friends and like moved to Japan years ago. And I ask him to do a series for heroin or something. And it looks like he's drawn the graphics on the back of a load of bus tickets. Like, and he'll shoot the photo with his phone, not even an iPhone, like some like Sam's, like janky old like Motorola or something. And I'm like, Really? You want me to Photoshop all this and change all the lines? And it's the same with Craig. Craig's like, yeah, I've got this drawing for you. I've got this thing. And it's like pieces of paper that he's like put on a board and drawn around the shape of the board and then drawn on the thing. And it's like, and then none of the lines like connect. So it's like really hard to color. And it's like, I told him so many times. Oh, and the last one he sent me, he hadn't rubbed out the pencil lines. So I'm like, Craig, just get a, get a rubber, rub out the pencil lines, because it's going to take me forever to do it all in Photoshop. And um, but he doesn't he doesn't listen. You know, it's like it's and the next series he'll send me, he'll have like loads of pencil lines, and none of the boxes will be like none of the lines will be linked up. It'll be a nightmare. I think I think it's come a long way. The old um, you know skateboarding and, and 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 being an artist that comes from that world. Um, I actually just saw the Basquiat show this morning and I think it's, um, you know, the fact that that's in the Barbican and, and everything is, is, is like, you know, it, well, that, that may be different because that's come, it, it was from there anyway. And that's the first time that sort of artwork was really recognised like that. But I think this skateboarding world thing and where we come from, it's becoming a lot more recognised and it's, it's nice to see that. Um, and it's nice to be involved in that and you know when there's a when there's a Santa Cruz like collab like I'll be one of the artists they ask or something like that or Powell has like a 50 year anniversary or 30 year anniversary and it's like it's nice that they reach out and, and talk to all these artists and it's skateboarding's been going on for so long it's got this nice legacy and it's like it almost doesn't really care what anybody else thinks about it which is really nice and it's really like awesome to be involved in something like that um, but it does seem that it, people more people are appreciating it for what it's worth even though we don't care yeah. heroin was so organic it was an elaborate joke um, and it's just like yeah you can tell that you can tell that there's like life and like ideas and 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 there's a reason for these brands existing and a reason for this artwork existing and not like oh bish bosh yeah well, let's skateboarding's popular let's do a skateboard company and they don't even skate and it's like you know oh we, oh yeah we need to put some artwork on the bottom of them yeah you know it's like it's like it, there seems to be a purity in skateboarding right now and that like people are in it for the right reasons i don't know there's a million companies but it's that's that's great if like kids are kids are starting it themselves like you know that's that's a good thing that's how i started